Hello, my dear students, I am Dr. Sudhir, Professor of Education and Academic Coordinator, Central University of Kerala. Greetings and welcome to EPG Pastshala presentation. Today we will discuss the module on Education Commissions and Committees during the pre-independent India. Objectives of this module, one, to state the context and contributions of education commissions and committees appointed during British rule in India. Second, to understand and critically evaluate the notions like uh, Oriental Occidental language controversy, downward filtration theory, and the medium of instruction. Third, to provide the learners and overall understanding of distinct features of education during British period. Fourth, to develop learners conceptual awareness that how British period education framed a national system of education for India. Five, to critically evaluate the merits and demerits of recommendations of the committees and commission for educational development in India. In colonial India, the indigenous system of education prevailed. The pre-independent India witnessed several movements in the field of education. Under the tacit interest of Christian missionaries, East India Company took special efforts to promote educational endeavors in India from the beginning of 1800s. Now, we shall examine the various commissions and committees. The Charter Act 1813. It was Charles Grant, an officer of East India Company, who analyzed the problems and situation of the then education system prevailing in India. The report by Charles Grant blamed the company for completely neglecting the education in Indian subcontinent. Accepting the suggestions of Charles Grant, the British Parliament passed the Charter Act of 1813. It became a landmark in Indian education. By virtue of this act, East India Company owned education as its responsibility. It encouraged opening of education institutions all over India. A provision for an annual grant of 1 lakh rupees was made for education in India. Act also aimed the revival and promotion of language and literature, particularly English, Persian, Arabic, and Sanskrit. Macaulay's Minutes, 1835. Thomas Babington Macaulay, a scholar of British history, visited India as a member of the Council of Governor General. Later, he was appointed the chairman of public instruction of Bengal. Macaulay submitted a report of, on education in India known as Macaulay's Minutes. Lord Macaulay opposed the introduction of native languages uh, as medium of instruction. His interest was to promote European language and literature among the people in India. He proposed the downward filtration theory for promoting education and European values. According to Macaulay, the lower class of people generally follow the ideas of higher class. Therefore, education given to higher classes will be filtered down to the lower groups. Let me quote Macaulay, a single shelf of a good European library is worthy for the whole native literature of India. He also envisaged an Indian in blood and color, but English in taste, in opinion, in morale, and in intellect. Recommendations of Macaulay Minutes. The Minutes advocated downward filtration theory. English should be the medium of instruction. Government should financially support English education 
and the development of English language and literature, funds should not be provided to print oriental textbooks. Education should be worthy to enable interest of company rules in India. And financial support to oriental students and teachers should be stopped. There are certain merits uh, of Macaulay's minutes. The minutes gave uniformity and visualized a national system to education in India. It assured education as a responsibility of East India Company. Though it was against the indigenous education and interest of the Indian people, it created a revolution in to promote education in India. Macaulay's minutes helped to change the attitude of Indians towards uh, education. Also, it helped uh, general development of English and public education. It promoted opening of education institution all over the British India. The recommendations of Macaulay's stopped an issue called the Oriental and Occidental Controversy of language and literature as he advocated only for English education in India. There are certain demerits. Uh, let me highlight. Uh, first of all, Macaulay's minute failed to consider Indian interest, Indian languages and literature. It implemented a version of uh, European education in India. The recommendation that English as a medium of instruction was an undesirable suggestion. It underestimated and discouraged financial support to indigenous system of education. It rejected the prosperity of Indian language and literature. The third committee report I would like to discuss is Woods Dispatch 1854. East India Company appointed a committee to evolve a comprehensive policy on education in India. The report became famous as Wood's Dispatch in the name of the chairman of the committee, Sir Charles Wood. The report laid the foundation of modern Indian education and is popularly termed as the Magna Carta of Indian education. According to this report, Education should become the responsibility of British government as per the recommendation of Wood's dispatch. Education in India became responsibility of uh, British government. Until then, it was under the East India Company. It rejected the downward filtration theory proposed by Lord Macaulay. Wood's dispatch presented a scheme of education from primary to higher level. It recognized the significance and value of Indian languages and literature. Multi-educational programs were planned with the opening of regular institutions such as schools, teacher training centers, colleges and universities in India. Grand Innate in system to start schools was introduced for the first time and scholarships were made available for Indians for education. It also made provisions for education of women in India. Now we will see the recommendations of this committee, vernacular language as the medium of instruction at lower level. English was suggested of course as medium of instruction at higher levels and it discredited also the Macaulay's downward filtration theory. And official support was provided for private ventures in education in India. Establishment of professional education centers for courses in law, medicine, teacher training and technical edu education was also suggested by Woods Dispatch. Introduction of various scholarship to deserving Indian students were also proposed by Woods Committee. Opening of the Department of Public Instruction was another suggestion given by this committee 
and also it took lead to set up the universities in India of course, on the models of the universities in Europe. And with this uh, report, India could see some of the a, a number of universities emerging in 1857, the first of them being Calcutta University, Bombay University and Madras University. The Woods Dispatch also gave guidelines for comprehensive, secular, national and well articulated system of education for India. Hence, uh, Woods Dispatch is of course considered as the Magna Carta of uh, the Indian education. Hunter Commission 1882. The Hunter Commission was appointed in February 1882 under the chairmanship of Sir William Hunter with 20 members including prominent Indians. The committee was primarily meant to assess and reformulate the primary education in India. The terms of reference of the commission was to assess the utility of grandinate system and prepare guidelines for education institution working under the British government and also under the private education system. Recommendations of uh, Hunter Commission, 1. Reforms in education policy, financing systems, training of teachers and curriculum at different levels. Provisions and special encouragement of primary education for the tribal and backward children in India. This provision was made for the first time in India and we should be thankful to the Hunter Commission. Handing over of elementary schools to local management was one of the other decisions given by Hunter Commission. Opening of new secondary schools with grandine aid under private management and in grandine aid to indigenous schools were also recommended by this commission. Indian University Commission 1902. Indian University Commission was appointed by Lord Curzon in 1902. The commission was mainly meant to reformulate the higher and university education in India. The commission also suggested ways and means for the organization and working of universities in India. Recommendations of this commission. First one is the reorganization of the university bodies such as Senate and syndicates. Terms and conditions for the appointment of uh, teaching faculty in university departments and colleges were prescribed. Teacher representation in senate and syndicate of the universities, curriculum and examination reforms was another recommendation by this uh, commission. And duration of the degree courses was fixed as three years and that of honors degree as four years. The Indian Universities Act 1904 was formulated mainly on the basis of the recommendations of this commission. Now we will see the Hattung Committee 1928-1929. Sir Philip Hattung was the chairman of the committee established in 1928 by Simon Commission to review of the school curriculum and modernization of schools. Major suggestions of this committee were there should be a continuous effort for universalization of elementary education in India. Second one, implementation of the compulsory primary education in all provinces of India. Improvement of the quality of primary education. Efforts to reduce wastage and stagnation in schools, increasing the number of schools at secondary level, establishment of more colleges and universities in India and universities to provide opportunities for research programs. Now we will go to another committee that Abbott would report 1937. Two eminent British educationists, 
A. Abbott and S. H. Wood were invited to suggest measures for revitalizing the technical and vocational education in India. The major recommendations of this committee equal priority to vocational and general education, establishment of polytechnics as an innovative experiment for technical and vocational education. Delhi government model school was converted as first polytechnic in India after the recommendations of this committee. Measures for proper enrichment of inborn talents and skills of students. This was the first uh, step to promote skill education in Indian schools. Simultaneous existence of general and technical schools should be encouraged. Starting of junior and senior basic schools were also advocated by this committee. Appointment of trained women teachers and special attention for physical education were the other recommendations of this committee. Proper control and monitoring of educational institution and establishment of vocational training centers were also suggested. We have already discussed seven commissions and committees. And the last one I am going to discuss with you today is Sargent Report 1944. The Central Advisory Board on Education published a report on education in January 1944. This report is popularly known as Sargent Report after the name of the then educational advisor to government of India, Sir John Sargent. The report offered a scheme for regenerating the education in India after the Second World War. The report dealt with the various aspects of education such as nursery and primary school education, examination reforms, teacher training and even the health education in India. It proposed a close coordination between the central and provincial governments. It also proposed to set up the All India Council for Technical Education and the Central Bureau of Education in India. The Sargent Report recommended the Gandhian concept of Naithalim, basic education as the national scheme of elementary education in India. Dear students, we have already discussed eight commissions and committees reports during the pre-independent period. Now, I will sum up the gist of all these reports. There had a number of committees and commissions and the prominent ones we have already discussed. And now, the first one, the Charter Act of 1813 was a landmark to promote education in India and it suggested education as the responsibility of East India Company. The Macaulay's Minutes uh, proposed downward filtration theory and English as the medium of instruction. The Woods Dispatch uh, defined almost uh, all aspects of education and promoted Indian languages as medium of instruction at primary level. Indian University Commission 1902 made the blueprint for higher education and organization of colleges and universities in India. The Sarjan Report 1944 recommended basic education as the national scheme for elementary education in India and it recommended also to set up the All India Council for Technical Education. No doubt the recommendations of these committees and commissions directly or indirectly influence the growth of national system of education in India. I am happy to discuss uh, the prominent uh, commissions and committees and their reports uh, with you students. Thank you.